Uh, Pat Hickey, um, you've decided to speak out for the first time uh, following claims by your former colleagues in the Olympic Council of Ireland that the ticketing scandal and your arrest in Rio last year has cost the OCI 1.5 million euro and basically plunged it into the red. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction to that is that that is not correct. Um, I've got, I've read the media and the impression the media give is that I was the sole cause of this spend of 1.5 million. But that is not correct. I've been able to establish that um, after I was arrested in Rio, uh, the executive committee created a crisis management committee, which consisted of three people. And they had powers of expenditure and one they went to arthur cox and co solicitors and they were charged four hundred thousand for legal advice uh, then they uh, commissioned a grant thornton report which cost two hundred and fourteen thousand euros then they had a technology company sb on which was just forty thousand euros then they had services from the communication clinic which was a cost of eighty thousand euros then they had a report by the lights for 18,000 euros. And then finally, Wilson Hartnell, WHPR, was a cost of 11,000 euros. Now, my actual costs so far in the cases in Rio amount to just under 250,000 uh, euros. And I put in place a policy 15 years ago to provide for an insurance in case the directors or officers had a situation like happened to me. So there is full insurance cover at the moment for my costs uh, and there's a cap on that of one million. So you can see the separation in the cost of 1.5 million was done without my knowledge. I know nothing about it. This was done by the Crisis Management Committee and my costs are, are as I have uh, outlined. So um, it's just that the media gave the wrong impression that I was the cost, cause of that cost. Have you seen the Judge Carol Morn report? Uh, no, I haven't seen the final report, but I have seen a draft of the report. Why have you a difficulty with that being published? Uh, our legal advice is <clears throat> that nothing should be reported whatsoever about the report or any reporting media-wise on the report. The reason being is that can be used as evidence against me by the prosecutor in my trial in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, there's a very unusual quirk in the law here in that in Rio, any media reports, headlines, newspaper articles, TV, radio, they can be used by the prosecutor as evidence. Now, in Ireland, this is impossible. My senior and junior counsel were appalled when they heard this. And uh, in this part of the world, that is just not possible that you could be prosecuted on newspaper headlines. So this is why we have written to Minister Ross, Minister O'Donovan, the Attorney General and Judge Morn, telling them that this report should not be published until my trial comes to an end in Rio. Pat Hickey, when, when, when you <coughs> put all the coverage of your arrest together, uh, <coughs> And you read the commentary and the criticism of you here. Um, and when you look into the subtext of comments made by your successor, uh, Sarah Keane, and the, uh, around the IOC's uh, AGM last week, it becomes very clear that the implication is that you are responsible for this whole mess. What have you to say to that? Well, first, I'd like to clarify that I have a very good relationship with Sarah Keane, the president of the OCI, my successor, and her committee. And in fact, I think she will make a great president. And uh, I was the one who brought her onto the committee, so I, I know her. Um, regards the other part of your question is that I was president for 29 years. So in that time, you make a lot of enemies with different decisions, etc. And obviously, a lot of people came out of the woodwork to bear the axe that they had to grind, etc., over the years. And that's, you know, cut and thrust. But uh, everybody should judge me on how I left the Olympic Council of Ireland. I declared last January before Rio 
that I was finishing and I would not serve again as president or be a candidate. And <clears throat> when I flew to Rio, we left a bank balance of three million euros in the account and a property in Holt valued three million euros. And all throughout my stewardship, uh, everything was conducted in a proper and correct manner with the Olympic Council of Ireland. Our accounts were audited uh, every year by Mazars, the international firm, also with a clean bill of health, I might add, also by the Irish Sports Council, by the International Olympic Committee and by the Controller and Auditor General. And uh, there has been no hint anywhere along the lines of all these accusations of any idea of misappropriation of funds of any kind. Everything has been done properly and correctly under my presidency. Can I just me ask you about the circumstances <coughs> and the events leading up to your arrest and the circumstances of your arrest? The actual arrest was recorded and broadcast across the world. Um, and I want to put it to you that it, it left an impression that Pat Hickey has serious questions to answer, that there was something decidedly dodgy about all of this. Well, there's no doubt about it. The arrest was a humiliation on my behalf at six o'clock in the morning at my hotel bedroom. And to open the door in the full glare of the world's media was just incredible. And this uh, information had been sold on by the police that they were going to uh, arrest me. This is how the media didn't arrive there by accident. And um, uh, I was I was a, I was treated disgracefully, absolutely disgracefully. And uh, the judge, the high court judge in Brazil who released me from the, my detention in prison, he, uh, he, ad he accused and attacked the prosecutor and the policeman who arrested me that I should never ever have been put in prison, that they should have just taken my passport off me like they did to my three colleagues until their investigations were finished. And unfortunately that didn't happen. But uh, the judgment is there for all to read of the High Court judge in Brazil. The minister, <coughs> Shane Ross, the <coughs> minister, uh, flew out, it would appear, and the impression was given at the time, to sp specially uh, and specifically sort out the ticketing fiasco. Uh, and back here in Ireland, the impression we got was that you refused to cooperate with him. No, what happened was... Uh, I don't know whether the minister, the impression here was the minister came out to solve the ticket problem. The minister was always coming out. Uh, him and his wife were coming for the games. And we, ha as our guests, we had invited him. So he had booked way in advance, uh, weeks in advance, uh, bedrooms for him and his wife and his entourage. And uh, that's his private secretary. And the night he came out, <coughs> we had a meeting with him and his private secretary, myself and my first vice president, Willie O'Brien. And we wouldn't agree to allow his private secretary sit on our inquiry because we're an autonomous body and the rules are we should be free of all uh, political and religious interference. But the next day, <coughs> Kieran Mulvey, the chairman of the Irish Sports Council, was in Rio at the time and he brokered an arrangement between myself and the minister where we eventually agreed, for peace sake, to allow his private secretary to sit on our internal inquiry. So um, it was to be announced the next morning by the minister and myself, but events overtook us then and I was arrested at six in the morning. So we never got around. And that would have saved, in my opinion, the taxpayer. I reckon the morning inquiry will be cost the taxpayer five or six million euros. And uh, if we had have had this uh, internal inquiry with the minister's private secretary, it would have cost less than 100,000. Were you surprised when the minister left uh, after your arrest well uh, the whole olympic council uh, was surprised because he had to, he was due to stay another four or five days and um he scampered off back home i think he was afraid he was going to be arrested himself because it's a bit like the wild west out there and anything could happen as i found out and um but um i inquired from the olympic officials remaining in rio did he inquire into my well-being and health, etc.? And was I being looked after? Was anyone taking care of me in the prison, etc.? And uh, he never inquired. Didn't ask the Olympic Council of Ireland, and <coughs> it just uh, 
legged it back to um, to Ireland. And it would have been, you know, a nice kind gesture mm. to find out because my colleagues in the International Olympic Committee were astounded because they couldn't believe that their Minister of Sport would have left Rio while one of them was in jail. Now, all of this was clearly hugely traumatic yeah. and embarrassing for you and your family. Uh, you're 72 years of age. Um, I don't believe anything like this ever happened to you before. You are you? Do you feel very put out by what has happened here? As in that, it seems that the label of criminal has been attached to you without any kind of evidence or corroboration. Absolutely, <clears throat> it's turned my life upside down. Uh, one would think that I am the master of a huge international criminal conspiracy, a mafiosa of something or other, and. Uh, the effect this has had on my family and uh, my wife, my children, uh, it's just incredible. And my colleagues in the International Olympic Committee can't believe this because they know me for so many years and they know I'm completely innocent and I will be proved innocent. But this has come, as you said, I'm 72 years of age. And the one downside out of the whole thing was it has affected my health. I got a heart problem as a result of the stress. And I've already had two procedures on my heart which were not successful. I'm still undergoing treatment. And uh, you can imagine your life changing. I have never, ever been in trouble with the law in my life, anywhere in the world. And for this to happen at my age, it's just uh, amazing. My <clears throat> my Dublin solicitor, uh, Giles Kennedy, he came to Rio to meet with my uh, Brazilian lawyers. And in front of uh, Giles Kennedy, the head of the firm, Arthur Levine, said that in his 45 years at the Brazilian law, criminal law, he has never seen such a case with no evidence and such a lack of evidence. And he couldn't believe it being brought forward. Why do you think they've done that? They did this because uh, they had a bad experience in 2014 at the World Cup soccer. Uh, they were humiliated. Uh, they arrested a, a, a guy called Ray Whelan same position as myself except that he was an official ticket agent for FIFA and he was unfortunately in jail for three weeks where I was in jail for 10, 10 days and uh, it took him uh, two years to clear his name and the Supreme Court judge excoriated the lower courts in the way they dealt with him so the Brazilian police and etc and officials were smarting since 2014 over this. And the word on the street is they wanted to do another FIFA to the International Olympic Committee. And it looks like of all the nationalities on the executive board of the International Olympic Committee, which I am one, Ireland was the nation with no clout whatsoever in Brazil, which was proved that the government were useless. Government, The Irish government did absolutely zero for me. I couldn't praise the consul in Rio, the Irish consul and her team strong enough. They were very good, sympathetic. They looked after me and they saw to my needs, but they had no political power. But the inaction of the Irish government was something else. Uh, Pat Hickey, thank you very much. Thank you, Bo.